Okay, uh, this is a um, nematicide application trial. Um, we decided to site this in this, this part of the field here because when we uh, GPS, GPS mapped it and soil sampled the field, we actually came up with a hotspot for PCN in this area here. The hotspot was actually where that flag is there with the orange triangle on, uh, and it uh, had uh, 16 eggs per gram uh, of soil just in this area, which in, in some, some, well, for Castle Howard, that's actually not bad. Well, that's quite uh, there are other cases where of normal, is that? it is where there's over a hundred eggs per gram of soil in some fields, um, which obviously don't see potatoes just at the moment. Anyway, they may do one day when we get some decent varieties, Andrew. <laughs> We're working on it. I know you are. <laughs> I know you. Are. Um, so again, um, just to go through some basics. Um, PCN then, and forgive me if I'm teaching you to suck eggs or whatever, PCN we're talking about two different things then. We're talking about Rostockiensis and Pallida. Now is it important to differentiate between the two? Yeah. It is. And why is that then? Later attack on the uh, egg hatch on uh, Pallida to okay, Rostockiensis. Excellent. Fantastic. So, so basically uh, Pallida tend to hatch a lot later. Uh, Rostocki Rostockiensis will obviously hatch a bit, a bit earlier. Um, is there another reason why we need to be uh, interested in, 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 uh, in the type of PCM we've got, bearing in mind if we're thinking about varieties and that sort of thing? Well it may be then that uh, certain varieties are resistant to Rostockiensis. Uh, some varieties might be partially or reasonably resistant to, to Pallida. Um, a lot of the varieties that have been bred over the last, no, well, who knows how many years, things like Dell, uh, Piper, uh, had good resistance to to Rostockiensis. Uh, the difference between Rostock between uh, resistance and tolerance. Anyone going to give me an idea on, on what the difference might be? Does it matter? Resistance is the ability of the plant to actually reduce PCN numbers. So, for example, then. Uh, this is a crop of innovator. It's probably one of the best, has some one of the best resistance characteristics of, of any variety to pallida. So this this count of 16 eggs here, I actually went about two weeks ago into all the untreated plots, uh, took soil samples, and the best we came back with, with was three eggs per gram of soil. So it's actually done a job at reducing the population of pallida. 96 dead cis. 96 dead cis. Absolutely. 96 dead cis. Yeah. Um, so uh, it, it, it's quite important to know whether the variety will do that. However, when we go down the plots and you, you have a look, um, innovators not very tolerant. And the tolerance bit is where uh, it is the plant's ability then to survive that PCN attack in the first place. Um, so what you then tend to find then is there's some newer varieties now. There's things like Performer, uh, Royal. I'm trying to think of a, of a crisping one I might do off the top of my head in a minute. Uh, Matt might help me uh, with your breeding expertise. Arsenal. Arsenal, yeah. Ars Arsenal's good. Yeah, Arsenal's Arsenal. reasonably good. Good, good resistance uh, to, to, to both um, and, and, uh, and, and tolerance and therefore the, the deeper rooting and able to tolerate the attack of PCN in, in the first place as well. So, so, so what we're looking at here then is um, different ways of applying a nematicide. I guess you all apply nematicides and how do you apply them? On a bed tiller? On a bed tiller. So when you apply them, what sort of depth are you are you applying them to? The depth that the bed tiller is working at, which is what, 30 centimetres? Do you know what the label says for nematorin and viodate about incorporation depth for the nematicide? Should do. <laughs> It's not, a, it's not a test in any way, but it's 10 to 15 centimetres. Uh, so that, that's one thing. How much money is spent annually on nematicides in the potato crop? An awful lot. 14 million. 14 million spent annually. And so 
you're spending an awful lot as growers you're spending an awful lot of money on on a nematicide you need it to work well you need it to work properly and if you're over incorporating it is it working as well are you getting the best value for money and uh, I think also um, well I mean Andrew you've changed your practices over yeah, the last few years seven years ago I think it was with a cripple paper in one of our own fields that with GPS testing, we, we knew there was PCM there in, in fairly high levels. We knew where the hotspots were. And I wasn't satisfied with that, with the, the activity, the efficacy of, of uh, the nematicides we were using. One rainy Saturday afternoon, I got bit between my teeth. I went into the workshop with a, a fairly scrap, clunky old bed tiller, a scrap uh, pot old sour potato planter ridging hood gas the middle ridge off and grafted it onto the back of it with bits I found in the scrap bin. It's part in Connor of Fiddle for you to inspect my uh, workmanship, I use the loosest of terms. I put the microband applicators on the top. Well, previously what we'd been doing was applying it on a, a bed tiller before the destoner. And sometimes we were going through with the bed tiller just to put the nematharin on. Now that didn't make any sense in, it, in its own right. It was, it was quite slow, it was quite expensive. We didn't need to be mixing it in amongst all that soil. Were we diluting it? That's tending to be where the research was heading, so let's have an experiment. So off I, off I went. One rainy, this rainy Saturday afternoon, I got this clunky old thing put together. My dad thought I'd lost the plot. What the hell are you doing? Smoky old tractor, off I went for a bit of a trial, ne next fine day. And that was it for a few months until crop came through. As crops get to about this time of year, you can start seeing effects of PCN in a crop. And because we knew to the line where I'd been with this applicator and we knew where the hot spots were, straight through the middle of it, you could see to a line the difference between the two application methods. And the difference was probably two weeks longer before the crop started dying back on the back of PCN. Obviously it also nest eventually. But paper being a very indeterminate variety, it'll keep growing top forevermore unless it gets attacked by something like PCN. So it, it was a good variety to see in the, in the experiment. But it was such a such a clear difference that there, there had to be some sense in it and we've used it ever since now it's about knackered now to be quite honest um there's teeth missing off a gear and it was it was packed up as scrap before i made it into this machine and i said that seven years ago and we pull it behind an eight uh, 90 horsepower 18 year old tractor and he can manage to keep up with, with, with two d stoners and up to the planter so the, the headland man which tends to be me can manage to fit it in between filling the planter and moving boxes and doing whatever is required on the headland. It isn't. It is an extra cost. But if you are spending with me, me take Yorkshire farmer hat on. If you are spending 140, 50 pound an acre, mm -hmm. convert that into hectares, John. 400 pound hectare. Yeah, uh, on on a chemical. What's a tenner an acre to incorporate it to get it to get that extra two weeks activity? To, in my mind, it's a no-brainer. Mm. Does it go after the bed tiller, but before the d stone So after the, it, we goes that after the d stone and before after the planter. The, ah, right. the biggest difference that we, we first had it using was an old Ford 5.6, because that's all that was spare at the time. And it's top link sensing hydraulics on it. And it is very, very, very difficult with a top link sensing tractor to keep an accurate depth without having some wheels that run in the, in the wheelings. And what we struggle with, although not necessarily in this field so much, is variable soil from one end to the other can vary between that much and that much and that's often dictated by how deep the wheelings are how much clod the D-stone is putting out so just having depth wheels wasn't really working for us there's a the remains of one stuck on the side of it but it didn't really work so they got taken off and that that tractor that's on it now is actually what we use it on in the field and it's got lower link sensing on it and providing you get the hydraulic set up right it just alters itself according to the bed so we continually we're, we're consistently that that sort of 100, 150 mil from the top of the bed. I often use the, the planting depth as a guide to how deep to incorporate the nematharin. Whether it be a psychological effect, I'm not really sure, but dells we tend to incorporate it slightly shallower because you're only planting them at four inch. And other things that are planted deeper tend to incorporate it ever so slightly deeper. But if you go too deep with it, you tend to lose that soil into the wheelings because the machine's running too full. And that's also an effect of incorporating it before the destoner. For one, you're diluting it in, a, in a, a deep bed of soil, and then you come along with your destoner and you're actually putting treated soil into the wheeling. Mm. You can't do any good in the wheeling. Mm. I think one, one thing you've also got to bear in mind is that a number of years ago, there was a huge amount of work done on PCN, uh, and it showed that even if applied properly, it's only about 60% effective on 
on, 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 on your population. So if you put all these sums to, you know, you've got 400 pounds a hectare it's costing you now, if it's only 60% effective applied properly, you know, at the, at the sort of uh, 15 to 20 centimetre, 10 to 15 centimetre depth, if you're then applying it on a, on a bed tiller at 30 to 35 centimetres, then it's only going to be 30% effective. So, and you're still spending 400 pounds, you know, a, a, a hectare on a product which you know that's not particularly cost effective I, I, I don't think so uh, and I think Andrew you, you found really that you know by doing this and, and the scenario you've given about the piper just shows that you know you're going to get more yield ultimately out of crop by applying it properly so uh, what, what we did here then and we, we chose this rep to actually show you because the at the moment the um, the visual differences partic particularly on the canopy not so much on the actual tubers but particularly on the canopy uh, tell their own story uh, because of the, the hot spot that we're in but obviously we've got untreated um, and uh, and there's four reps of untreated so which will all get dug and, and compared we've then got a um, the, the, the bed tiller uh, deep you know the deep cultivation application with, with, with nemathorin you know working to 30 35 centimeters and then we looked at uh, four other different things we thought well let's go with what Andrew does anyway and um, and, and look at the you know the standard farm practice the 15 centimeters and actually does it matter with the speed the rotor is going in to actually incorporate it the the, the optimum um, is recommended that, that the rotor speed is is one and a half times forward speed um, but we, we thought well does it actually matter if the rotor is going slightly faster uh, so we looked at uh, two times uh, the forward speed bearing in mind you're not actually cultivating all you're doing is mixing and that's all, you, all you're trying to do. So you can actually crack on forward speed wise as long as that rotor is going slightly faster. So we also then thought well 15 centimetres on the on the uh, Nemathorin label well, does it actually matter if it goes to 20 centimetres? Is, is, is that any different? Bearing in mind obviously that you know going down to 30 you, you're getting a huge dilution effect. So we did we, we looked at uh, these different scenarios here. Um, I'll ignore that one for a minute this this plot here this one here is basically re regarding this this rep that we're looking at in terms of uh, emergence at canopy cover uh, we are basically canopy cover on the 4th of July and the 11th of July and treatment A which is the untreated completely by the even by the 11th of July had only 50% ground cover and if you compared that with with the, uh, one of the fully treated um, the E and F and the Maxide bed tiller here these ones here on, on the same date they had over 90 percent ground cover even the even b uh the bed tiller to be fair um there that was eight that was down at 80 percent and again that trend actually follows in the other plots this is representative of all the other all the other plots in this in this trial but there is a trend obviously with the untreated to to have uh, less ground cover uh canopy development early on so i think Based with that knowledge, we just need to have a look at uh, behind us then, really, at the at the plots and the digs that we've done uh, for the time being. So this is a nematicide bed tiller. Andrew's nematicide bed tiller, working at 20 centimetre depth, using the optimum rotor speed of one and a half times uh, forward speed. Um, the I did work some yields out earlier, if I can find what I had. Just as we're looking at the moment. Uh, so there were six plants, nine stems uh, in this, this bit of a dig. It was only a metre dig. Uh, there was 4.8 kilos there, 37 tubers. That will equate to around about 48 tonnes a hectare on a, on a metre dig, basically. Um, so it's not looking too bad. This is the nematicide bed tiller. Work, again, working at the 20 centimetre depth, but with a faster, faster rotor speed. And, uh, and in this one, uh, we again six plants, ten stems. There's five kilos there, uh, about 50 tons a hectare. Then based on that, uh, 35 tubers. Also, just look at the canopy development here in this untreated one, where you can actually see the differences in. You certainly can see the phosphate deficiency, and you can see the canopy still not met across the rows. Um, six plants again, ten stems. 29 tubers and uh, about 44 tonnes a hectare and I think one of the beauties of uh, 
maybe having a second early in a high PCN situation is certainly with Innovator with the, the, the tolerance, well, the, the resistance that it has, um, you're going to get a yield. But having said that, you know, in two weeks' time when this crop's about ready to burn off, is that going to increase any more? Whereas some of these others may well increase a lot more. So then we come down to the nematicide bed tiller working at 15 centimetres, the optimum optimum rotor speed of the one and a half times. Uh, this is six plants, 11 stems, 35 tubers, doing about 43 tonnes at the moment. But again, we're, we're slap bang in the middle of the uh, of the PCN hotspot here, and I guess a bit of the the intolerance uh, of the of the variety, in, even though we've applied the mat side properly, uh, is is having a a slight effect on this now. Um, Again, there's a little bit more phosphate deficiency appearing in that. It's applied with the deep bed tilling operation, um, which I guess has been typical for a number of years uh, for the way of applying the side. And again, you can see quite severe phosphate deficiency appearing now. Again, the canopies, yes, it's better than the untreated, uh, undoubtedly, but it's still not been, st still, still not brilliant. Um, this is, uh, there's 38 tubers here. Six plants, 11 stems. It's doing about 44 tonnes at the moment. And again, you can completely see complete difference in canopy again. Yeah, there's a bit, a bit of phosphate deficiency still appearing in it. Uh, but this is uh, six plants, nine stems, uh, 29 tubers, and that's doing 53 tonnes at the moment. Um, so I think that, that, you know, in conjunction with basically the differences in canopy, uh, given that obviously that you know, radiation and radiation capture equals yield, ultimately. You know, it's important to maintain as much canopy as you can. And certainly untreated and the, uh, the, the deep bed tilling, we've got, certainly got less canopy. And I think it'll be interesting to see when the other plots start coming. There are one or two little, little bits starting to appear now in these other plots. Uh, there's one rep above us and then another two reps below. Be interesting to see when we come to, to harvest these. Okay.